Hi, I'm Alexandra White, the moderator for today's discussion. And with me today, I have Melis Chenaire, the AVP of Paid Media for DAC, and Simon Jennings, the CRO of Palmerex. Welcome to both of you. Simon, how has data-driven personalization evolved in recent years, and what does it mean for brands and media companies today? So the most recent parts of the evolution uh, have been around machine learning and AI. That's what we've been dealing with. Um, and what that means is we've had to change our conversation from what can we do to maybe what should we do, uh, privacy being very important to our users, uh, to all of our users. Um, it has it's just introduced, um, I think, a very meaningful conversation about not getting in the areas of risk and creepiness and providing great value for the consumers uh, and, and obviously for the advertisers. For us specifically, it's also opened up uh, an interesting conversation about areas we can go using data to drive value for our customers, um, staying away from some of the PII-related things. Melis, what are the benefits and risks of hyper-personalized marketing for brands and consumers? Yes, great question. Um, I do think that a lot of brands right now are spending money and effort to try to bring their data into compliance. Um, and that would be the first priority for us. For any data that we use, we need to make sure that it is legally compliant. Um, and the brands need to understand that this is their responsibility because they are the ones collecting their first party data. Um, that being said, um, there are partners such as Palmerex, obviously, in the marketplace. And if you are working on your first party data and bringing it up to compliance and organizing it, you can very reliably use Palmerex's data for your advertising targeting. Uh, once that hurdle is cleared, there is tremendous potential in terms of launching full funnel campaigns and making sure that we're using that um, to move the consumer from the upper funnel awareness to the lower funnel um, conversion. Um, and DAC can obviously help with this. We specialize in holistic full funnel media strategies. And speaking of the advent of AI, we also have an uh, operating system called Iris that's essentially um, a guided system to help us with media planning and execution to make sure your campaigns are reaching full potential. Simon, how can brands leverage first party data in a privacy conscious environment to maintain consumer trust while using personalization at scale? Okay, so I mean, the starting point is the obvious point. It's just uh, responsibly and respectfully uh, using the data. Uh, make sure that you are very transparent uh, when you are collecting the data as to the purposes for it. Stay true to that promise. Uh, get proper consent. Uh, and, and, and for us, um, we do a, at Palmerx, we do a bit of a gut check all the time uh, when we are gathering data. We, we look at the value exchange required and we start with the value has to be valuable to the consumer, not, not even to the advertiser necessarily. It has to add value to them, but, but it starts with the consumer. Uh, so for us, the value exchange uh, for some of the data was, I mean, location data was very important for us for a number of reasons as we get smarter about what we're doing starting with our consumers. We, our consumers want to know when active weather is going to come through a very small geographic area that's incredibly important to them. And we offer the exchange of value. We we're going to give you this very precise information in a timely manner that you can trust mm -hmm. in exchange for the location of where you are. We anonymize all of that and we make it uh, available for us to get smarter about our products and to partner with, uh, our, uh, with, with partners like DAC. Right, and Melis, can you provide an example of how brands can implement this? Yes, so I think what's interesting is that when we're talking about uh, data, usually uh, people only think about behavioral data. Um, but as Simon mentioned, location data is actually a huge part of our behavior. Um, so just to give you a sense of how granular this can potentially get, um, DAC has clients for which we are managing 18,000 individual campaigns that are uh, all location targeted. Now, is that the right level of granularity for every brand? No, but it's also kind of our job to find that right level of granularity. Um, so our philosophy on this is targeting enterprise to local. So what that means is the enterprise obviously is the brand as a whole. 
uh, but we also want to consider the franchisees of that brand, the different branches, the different stores, and how the users around those stores are behaving and circulating. Um, and we don't even just look at surface level location data while doing that. So we can look at user movement within a geographic space. So things like uh, how, what type of driving time should we be targeting? Um, is a user moving from one location to another? Uh, that type of thing. Um, so with that said, um, you know, we are actually in a very good position to be able to uh, successfully execute um, on not just paid, but in collaboration with SEO, organic, uh, local listings, to make sure that we can really bring the advertiser strategy to life. Melis, how do brands measure the effectiveness of personalized marketing beyond just engagement and conversion rates? Well, we have a plethora of data in the platforms that we're working with, obviously. Um, but I would say that while things like views or impressions or clicks are kind of the first step of measuring impact, uh, really to get down to it, I would highly recommend running brand awareness or brand sentiment studies, uh, which our strategic insights team can help with. Um, and if at all possible, I would recommend backing that up with a robust MMM study. Um, and our Prove Analytics team can help with that too. It just really helps in understanding whether your investment is accurately distributed uh, and making any changes if you need to for a second run. Simon, how can media companies effectively communicate the value exchange inherent in personalized content to consumers, ensuring transparency and understanding? Uh, so in our experience, we're, we're, at, we're at the point where uh, simplicity and honesty seem to be working the best. Uh, I think we spent a lot of time trying to justify our, what we were trying to do. It, it, it didn't work. So keeping it really simple um, is good for us uh, as a consumer uh, website business, um, our our standing with our consumers is is, is paramount to us. We are the uh, number one trusted media uh, company in Canada. We have been for a couple of years. That relationship we don't we, we don't mess with. That's sort of thing. It's also, uh, I think, the um, one of the most important reasons why partners like DAC use us. So um, it goes beyond just the communication of how we are going to use data and that value exchange. It has to be something you live uh, and, and, and show in your work after that as well. So um, we've been working with AI a lot recently uh, in the uh, advertising side, creating, um, I'll give you an example. We did, a, we did a summer forecast where we used all the great technology available to us to be able to put one of our personalities in 460 home hardware stores across the country and give the actual summer forecast for that very small town um, at once, at, like, with scale, um, using all of the neat things that AI bring. But when we evaluated whether it was a good idea or not, we took it from the consumer standpoint. A, people in MacTier want to know about weather in MacTier. They want to know that Rachel, who everyone in MacTier knows who Rachel is, um, is standing in their store, which is really crazy. And um, Home Hardware, who's a national par partner of ours, has a, uh, a requirement to be really useful and valuable to all of their franchisees. So mm -hmm. they've put Rachel in each one of their stores. And the guy who owns Gord, who owns that home hardware store, is able to also append the fact that he's selling wheelbarrows for 50, 50 bucks off that day. So I mean, it kind of hits on the value uh, chain all the way across our ecosystem and isn't really perceived to be intrusive or creepy. So that's kind of how we do it. Just put it up front, keep it simple, and show value. That's great. And then what are some common pitfalls brands fall into when implementing data-driven personalization, and how can they avoid them? I think, first and foremost, going too narrow uh, can be a very common pitfall for some advertisers because it's tempting to layer targeting upon targeting upon targeting. Uh, but a lot of the time, unfortunately, that doesn't really get the scale for the advertising campaign to be effective. Um, another one, which we've already talked about, is overlooking the power of location data. Uh, location data can be very demonstrative of consumer behavior and be used in a privacy compliant way. Um, so I think that's a missed opportunity a lot of the time with a lot of brands. Um, finally, uh, we want to make sure that creative is appropriately aligned with the media that is going live. Creative should be ideally as data driven as the media selection. Um, it should be informed by audience data, by platform data, 
and it should be iterated fast if the platform data is providing feedback that the creative is misaligned to the media. Thank you both so much for your insights for today and for chatting with me. I think we all learned a lot. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, if you're interested in exploring a holistic full funnel media strategy with DAC, please feel free to get in touch with us. And thank you, Alexandra, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon. Thanks.